Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Wednesday, March 21st, 2018, episode number 45. You give us 20 minutes and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yeah, yeah, maybe a little lulls. And we do have some lulls picked for you today. We have a lulls of the day, but as is often the case, there's a couple stories that kind of could fit into the lulls category. You can get show notes at istate.tv slash H045, which is linked in the video descriptions for both the Facebook and the YouTube versions. And today's show is titled, drum roll please, Cops Fight for the Right to steal your stuff. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, The Right to Theft, The Cubit Revolution, Turk Reich Hates, hates Rahava, The Secret Trial of Haed Tamimi, and more. And if you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, I got, I'm, I'm really thinking that I'm going to have a drum roll uh, inserted here. I'm going to have a drum roll, but for right now I don't, so you just have to imagine it. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Wow, I didn't go to the, to the, to the, to the top story first. Oh, yes, I did. Here we go. Here we go. I just switched it around. Alabama considers ending civil asset forfeiture without a conviction. Whoa! You see, folks, it's not stealing when it's civil asset forfeiture. I did a show called that uh, not too long ago, and I just reused the image because it's definitely appropriate here. The good lords and ladies of the Alabama legislature are considering a measure that forces cops not to steal stuff from people before they have been properly convicted. Now, the polite term for this, by the way, uh, this theft before conviction is called civil asset forfeiture. And if your police department defends this anti-liberty tactic, then consider yourself an occupied territory with the enemy occupier being none other than your own police department. And I know that's going to trigger a number of my state of on state face friends, and I don't apologize for that. Alabama senators are considering a bill that would actually require cops to get a conviction before they take your stuff from you. I know, I know, I know. It is a, it's, it's a novel idea, and uh, I don't know. I, I mean... I think maybe this notion of innocent until proven guilty, yeah, might might one day catch on. You know, just I'm gonna keep my I'm gonna keep my eyeballs on that and see if it catches on. Apparently, though, the road pirates of Alabama, that's uh, Alabama State Police to you normies, don't think it's such a great idea. They claim it's an actual effective tool to fight crime, and a U.S. attorney for the Middle District of Alabama is joining in the pushback against a bill that would prevent cops from taking stuff from people that were not convicted of a crime. And this is from yellowhammernews.com coming up here. So it's uh, State Senator Arthur Orr and Representative Arnold Mooney. Mooney. <laughs> I said Mooney. Both Republicans proposed legislation this year to require a conviction before assets could be seized. The bills ignited three weeks late of debate. It actually ignited three weeks. Just, just. Just put that in your heads, folks. In America, land of the free, home of the free, a bill that would require cops to get a conviction before they take your stuff ignited three weeks of debate. And it received so much pushback from police and prosecutors that they were shelved. However, on Thursday, last Thursday, Mooney introduced a new bill that requires law enforcement to gather detailed data on seized assets starting in 2019 and publish an annual report. Oh, however, it wouldn't change the current legal process. So what they've done here is that, you know, they've kind of offered, hey, man, maybe we'll end this civil asset forfeiture. Oh, wait, hold on. 
Hold on, the road pirates don't like that. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we just, like, try to make it visible? You know, like, what are you doing? What if you don't want those assets? And let's, let's just make everything visible. Well, no, 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 no. They don't want that either. So <laughs> uh, so they're fighting back against that as well. That should tell you all you, all you need to, to, to know. And I encourage you, go, go to the show notes page and read the rest of the insanity for yourself. I, I think if I read anything more about this, the blood will shoot out of my eyes and I'll pass out and I won't be able to do any more of the show. And I did tell you that I'm going to limit the fear poured. So, hey, good news is they're still trying to to lengthen the leash for us. And that's, you know, that's that's laudable in and of itself, right? That was sarcasm. Hey, here's another story about civil asset forfeiture. Wyoming bill banning civil asset forfeiture waivers passes legislature. Now, now they're not banning civil asset forfeiture, so don't get too excited there, Wyomingans. Wyomingans? What do you call a Wyomingan? Wyomingian? I don't know. Our Wyoming masters are working on extending our leash a bit, passing a bill recently that would not allow cops to intimidate people to sign a waiver that would give the state their assets during an quote, investigation, and this is from U.S. News, a bill making it illegal for law enforcement officers to ask people to sign a waiver giving their assets to the state during roadside investigations passed in the state of Wyoming. Wyoming becomes just the third state to ban the forms, which critics say allow the state to avoid protections against civil asset forfeiture, a process that allows law enforcement to take people's property if they are implicated in a drug crime. The Wyoming Tribune Eagle reported Tuesday. The bill was sponsored by Democratic State Rep. Charles Pelsky, Pelkey and other lawmakers. Pelkey was inspired to push for the change by the story of, well, I'm not going to read the rest of this. You, 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 you can read for yourself. So, <laughs> so they're, they're working on extending your, your, your leash a little bit there in Wyoming, and I appreciate that. And I can just imagine how that goes down when the police pull you over and they're like, you know, you know, maybe you sign this waiver, you know, maybe things go better for you. You sign this waiver, you know, I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. And so you sign the waiver, of course, because, you know, dude's got a gun. Seriously, dude's got a gun. That's like the very definition of road piracy right there. But anyway, breakthrough in qubits could lead to mass production of quantum processors. A team of French nerds... <laughs> Hold on. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I meant scientist. Okay. Actually, I meant nerds. But don't get upset because uh, I do consider myself a pride member of the nerd tribe, so I say it with love and affection, although I don't know anything about these French scientist nerds. They could be total tools for all I know, but they are nerds, and I love nerds. Uh, they have developed a new way of producing qubits, the building blocks of quantum processors, that might usher in, quote, large-scale fabrication, unquote, of the precious things. And they are precious. And this brings us all the more closer to seeing quantum computers in every home in the somewhat near future. And this is from Next Big Future. Breakthrough to wafer-scale quantum processors using silicon isotope and eventually trillions of qubits. Blah. Wafer-scale quantum processors? Are you Okay. You scientists out there, you, you know exactly what that meant. CEA Letty, a French technology research institute of the CIA and INAC, a joint fundamental research institute between the CIA. Holy crap, the whole story is just the title of the people that did this. Well, whatever, that, that, that lengthy title group today announced a breakthrough towards large-scale fabrication of quantum bits or qubits, the elementary bricks of future quantum processors. They demonstrated on a 300 millimeter pre-industrial platform a new level of isotopic purification in a film deposited by chemical vapor depo deposition, you know, CVD. Of course, this enables creating qubits in thin layers of silicon using a very high purity silicon isotope 28SI. Well, I should hope it's 28SI. That's the only thing that makes sense here. Which produces a crystalline quality comparable to thin films usually made of natural silicone. So, so folks, 
there's some good news there. There's some awesome stuff happening. Now we're about ready to to travel back into terrible crapola news. Turk Reich vows to destroy all of Rahava after Afrin conquest. So, Herr Erdogan, with the uh, blood of the incense still fresh in his greedy mouth, has come out swinging harder against the people of Rahava, declaring his intention to sweep through all of Rahava all the way to the Iraq border. The, the attempts by the West to appease this fanatic madman by allowing him a foothold in Rahava through his Afrin invasion have failed in all the spectacular ways that any semi-lucid outside observer could have told you in advance they, they, they would have. Erdogan is attempting to rebuild the Ottoman Empire, the Turk Reich. And Afrin was for Erdogan what Austria was for Hitler, a first step in the journey to empire for the Turk supremacists, the new Aryans, if you will. Uh, by the way, I, mean, I think that you're getting the message if you've watched more than one of these headlines you may have missed shows, you probably have gotten it through your thick skull that Paul really does not like the Turk Reich. And you would be correct. I uh, uh, I think I've said this before. I bears repeating. Kate of the censor. He used to end every uh, speech that he made in the well of the Senate with, uh, and I may be getting this wrong, but it's it's I think it's Carthage est delectum. I may get that wrong. Uh, you Latinist, you can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But essentially what he said was Carthage must be destroyed. And I vow that if I ever give any speeches in the well of any Senate, that I will end any speech with the Turk Reich must be destroyed. So this is from Rudal.net. Turkey's president vowed to take the war against the YPG across all of Rahava and over the border into Iraq. Let me let me reword that for you. Uh, Turkey's uh, chancellor, uh, Herr Erdogan, has vowed to destroy the liberty-loving people of Rahava in his bid to create the the Turk Reich, the new Ottoman Empire. Now we will continue this process until we entirely eliminate this corridor, including in Manbij, Ain al Arab, Teb Abyad, Ras Alayan, and Kwanishi, Erdogan said on Monday in Accra. So there you have it. Uh, he's not done, you stupid Western idiots, allowing this guy to get a foothold in Rahava. Believing, I'm assuming believing that you may placate him and say, "Okay, we'll give you this," you know. Yeah, you're 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 freaking idiots. You're you're tools, and I got no love for you either. Let's go to. Uh, it's a kind of a good news story, but at the same hand, this next story it's it's a critique of the of the uh, the gun hating media as well. Now, this is a story that I wrote, which is on iState.tv, but it was also picked up on Daily Sheeple. So we're on the Daily Sheeple site. And if you don't go to thedailysheeple.com regularly, then shame on you. I mean, the Daily Sheeple is almost, almost as good as iState.tv. I mean, <laughs> but I'm not biased. Illinois governor vetoes anti-gun dealer licensing legislation. So out of the goodness of his heart, Illinois governor Bruce Rauner vetoed an anti-gun bill that would require gun stores to purchase state licensing. And the bill is intended purely to drive up the cost of doing gun business in Illinois. It's an indirect tactic uh, that the, the gun-grabbing cattle car guide maniacs are using to decrease the ability of individuals to acquire and own the basic tools of self-defense guns. And the article featured in WNDTV.com, an AP release, reveals the anti-gun nature of whoever wrote this article. And whoever wrote this article, I don't know, because there's no name attached, because they're freaking cowards. And it offers very little perspective in terms of the people who might support Rauner's move, but gives a whole section to the Anti-Gun Cattle Car Guide Association known as Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America or Police State Enablers Club for Moms of America for short, or, well, I'll say for reals. So the writer of the article, who was not credited, like I said, chose to use quotes by this anti-gun, anti-human, anti-progress organization and offered no challenge to the lies contained in the quotes. The organization said, This is a truly sad day for real Illinois. 
with a few strokes of the pen, Governor Rauner could have helped reduce gun violence in Illinois. How the hell could he have done that? By 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 burdening gun stores and driving more gun stores out of business, that would have done nothing about the gun violence in Illinois. So there's your first lie. Instead, he buckled under the pressure of a gun lobby. They be, that's becoming okay. A gun lobby. So they imagine that the only people that are resisting your efforts to to create a culture of anti-gun, to create a culture that accepts gun confiscation, that somehow that's only the gun lobby. Well, you know, I'm not a card-carrying member of, of any of these groups, the NRA, the Gun Un Owners of America, none of them. I'm not a card-carrying member of any of them, and I can tell you most assuredly that I vehemently oppose your efforts, and as do many others. It's it's way beyond the gun lobby at all. Uh, that's becoming more out of stuff each month with the sensibilities of most gun owners. That's a total freaking lie. Do you really believe that the majority of gun owners favor overtaxing gun businesses to drive them out of the market? Seriously. Now, did the writer challenge any of these lies? No. But this person's not gun. The, the, the statement isn't done with its lies. It's got another lie coming up here. I won't soon forget that amid a gun violence crisis in Illinois, there is no gun violence crisis in Illinois or in anywhere else in America, you freaking lying cattle car guide maniacs. And growing calls for gun safety laws. No, 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 they're not gun safety laws. They're gun confiscation laws. That's what we're talking about here, you tools. Uh, but again, nothing, nothing really challenging the person's statement by the idiot that, that wrote the piece. And I encourage you to go to thedailysheeple.com and find the article that I wrote. Read the whole article there. I can't go through the whole article or I'd, be, I, I'd take up the whole show. Israelis deny Ahed Tamimi request for a public trial. So facing multiple charges that include prison sentences, Ahed Tamimi now faces a secret court process after an Israeli judge refused her request for a public trial. The judge refused to grant her lawyers a request for a public trial, saying that there were no extraordinary circumstances that justified such a move. And given the high profile of the young girl, she's a teenager, she, I think she's 17, and the circumstances in which she was arrested, she slapped an Israeli soldier. And if you see the video, she slapped him very meekly. It was more a gesture. It wasn't, wasn't and she had done it just shortly after they had uh, uh, broken into her home and injured uh, some of her family members. She, she was understandably a bit upset. Uh, so given those circumstances, one would be hard-pressed not to believe this case did not contain an abundance of extraordinary circumstances. Her, her real uh, crime is that she's very vocal about her support for the Palestinian people. And I don't want you getting the impression that I'm taking sides in the Palestinians versus Israelis thing. I'm not. I'm taking her side in this particular case. I'm not, I'm not addressing the larger issue. I'm just taking the side of a head tamimi right here what israel is doing here to this young girl regardless of whether you're for or against israel for or against the palestinians uh whoever you think is right no this is wrong this is not a way to treat a teenage girl that that, that she's been sitting in prison i i believe it uh since january the move by the israeli court to keep this trial private has observers concerned that tamimi will be facing a rubber stamp court already predetermined to convict her and punish her for defying Israel's occupation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is your daily laws. It's a funny story. It might not sound it, but I think it's hilarious. Feminists revolt against Paris sex doll brothel. So the feminists of Paris are gathering in an angry horde of harpies to challenge the existence of a sex doll brothel. The Harpy Horde, or Horde of Harpies, whatever sings in your head, is demanding the brothel be shut down because it's just too sexual. It is literally claiming the brothel is degrading to women 
even though no woman was actually harmed in the making of this brothel experience. The odd part of this is it's, it's not just the feminists, but it's also the communists, the commies, who have joined in the fight against the X-Dolls, which is the name of the sex bots the sex brothel makes available to paying clients. So now the commies are against the sexy sexes as well, and the high moral standards of the feminists and the communists are becoming increasingly the same as the high moral standards of the Spanish Inquisition. And that should, that should tell you a lot about the nature of both groups. So there it is. <laughs> there was your moment of lulls, I hope, or your, your daily doles. I hope you enjoyed your daily lulls. And yes, that's, <laughs> I know some of you are probably like, hmm, um, how much for a ticket to Paris asking for a friend? You people, you people are horrible human beings. Senate rejects bill that would halt U.S. participation in Yemeni war. And, well, there's a majority of Republicans that voted uh, against uh, the, the bill. And, uh, uh, well, actually, they voted 55 to 44 to shut down the resolution. And it was a majority of Republicans, but, but a significant number of Democrats. And there were some Republicans that voted for it and majority of Democrats have voted for it. Uh, they voted to kill a resolution that would have ended the U.S. involvement in the Yemeni civil war. Currently, the U.S. is aiding its ally, Saudi Arabia, in its attempts to destroy what's left of Yemen. So as I started this off, the beatings will continue until morale approves or until the big business of war gets enough of a profit to justify a lull in the action. D.C. elites flock to Doomsday City Fortitude Ranch. So the elites of D.C. and other well-to-do twits are all putting their money where their paranoia is. They're investing in lots in a doomsday camp called Fortitude Ranch. Of course, it's the if the top twits are doing this, maybe you should consider it too. Wow. Well, that went by way too fast. So didn't get to all the stories. And I tell you what I'm going to do for, but the YouTube crowd, uh, the the audio crowd is not going to get this. The YouTube crowd will get this, and the uh, the Facebook crowd will get this. But the audio audience, you're going to miss these last two stories. I'm just going to show you the titles of the last two stories here. Google News to advance the MSM. That's a story about uh, Google News is uh, looking to get in the business of helping the news business. Uh, get their message out better, and also to uh, make more money in an effort to combat fake news and also to help the news businesses make money because if the news businesses aren't producing uh, content, that, uh, that could hurt Google. So <laughs> uh, what, will, what will Google really be doing there? My, my suspicion is it'll be really helping the MSM and it won't include independent news in that process, and it'll just continue to identify independent news as fake news and MSM as real news, even though MSM is more fake than, well, I won't say more fake than independent. I, well, I don't know. I, I guess it depends. But either way, it's probably not going to be a good thing for independent news folks. We'll see. And then the last story that we didn't get to, oh, robots suck at picking strawberries. Apparently they build a robot the machine thingy that pick strawberries, and apparently it doesn't do well as, as human hands do. So there's there's a little bit of a hope there. So I'm thinking I'm going to go out and I'm going to uh, work on, well, I'm going to work on becoming uh, a good, uh, uh, I guess I'm going to just work on becoming a good uh, strawberry picker. That way that I'm I'm useful when when the robots come, and they will, then they'll find me useful. And now I'm going to... Uh, address a couple of the comments here. Dang it. Only Larry commented. You people. You people that watched and you didn't comment? <sighs> no, I'm kidding. It's all right that you didn't comment. I mean, I'm probably going to cry tonight, but that's cool. Larry says civil asset forfeiture is awesome if applied properly. That's just one of the reasons why, one of the many reasons why I call Larry one of the worst human beings on the face of the planet. Uh, and Larry says, Paul hates Jews. Nope, nope. I just hate young girls being arrested and thrown in prison for crap they shouldn't be thrown in prison for. Uh, and he says, the Mossad will be crafting a response to your anti-Jew rant. Please stand by. Be patient. Could be any time now. I'm, 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 I'm looking into the skies for the drones and the missiles and see what comes my way. And then Larry finally says, just for kicks, Mossad will respond <laughs> during Passion Week. 
that's that's mighty good of uh, Mossad. I I appreciate that. And uh, I think I'm going to leave that there. I want to say that uh, that's uh, actually, I, I didn't stop recording. So guess what, YouTube crowd? You got a sense of uh, what you miss when you don't watch the show on the Facebooks. So, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, but that's all we have for today's headlines you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for March 21st, 2018. Or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. Or go to iState.tv slash H045. And as always, you can find our podcast show, which is just 20 minutes of headlines and nothing more. That's it. No intro, no outro, nothing. You can find that on iTunes and on Stitcher by searching for iState. And if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show, but you actually didn't miss the end because I didn't stop the record button. So you get in this show, you get the bonus coverage that you miss when, when you don't watch on Facebook. Uh, and, uh, if you want to make sure that you get the full Facebook version, be sure that you, you, you either follow me or make a friend request for me on my Facebook page, Paul Gordon. Look for the guy with the AR-15, and don't be afraid that that AR-15 was lost in a boating accident years ago. Uh, and finally, don't forget to join me tonight on this Daily Wednesday with the One True News at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page, which is linked in the video description. Tonight's show is titled... Google pirates are going to get you. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Collier, Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.